Good morning, Swartz. All right. Let's find our way to our spots, and let's go ahead and stand to our feet. I hope you're uh, already here with the right mindset that, that we're here to praise and worship the Lord and honor Him, remember all that He's done for us. This song in particular is going to uh, be reflective of today. If you've got palm branches in your hand, we're going we're gonna to address that here in a second, but feel free to use those to, uh, to worship. This is kind of a special day celebrating Palm Sunday, so let's... Let's be ready to uh, sing out to the top of our lungs. Here we go. All right, need y'all to sing out really loud on this one. My guitar isn't working. Uh, right now so that's why we need extra voices let's sing this part praise is rising eyes are turning to you we turn to you and hope is stirring hearts are for you we long for you cause when we see cause when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away come on now Jose Hosanna, you are the God who saves us and worthy of all our praises. So hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. When we see, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us and worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, among us we welcome you here Lord Jesus alright take a look up on the screen we're going to have a scripture for us I'm going to read it out book of Matthew chapter 21 most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people all around him were shouting Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. And the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And they were shouting, Hosanna. That's part of this song. We want to lift our voice. Remember that time where he was praised. And then we're going to get to the other parts of uh, the story in a minute later on today. But let's sing this part again. Because when we see, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence. 
In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Sing it one more time. When we see, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Come on now. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us and worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. All right, welcome to worship. We are so glad you're here. You can have a seat for just a moment. We are glad you joined us face to face. It's good to see your face. It's an encouragement to me, and I hope mine's a little encouragement to you. That'd be great too, right? Because we need each other. We are glad you're here. We're glad you joined us. If you are our guest, we want to say welcome. We are so glad you're here. This is our Palm Sunday. We recognize on Palm Sunday, we remember that this is when Jesus came into the city, and the people were shouting Hosanna, and they were worshiping the King. They just didn't understand the king that he was going to be. But we have the rest of the story, and we know that that king would later lay down his life for you and for me. So if they were praising him not understanding the king that he was, how much more should we be praising him because we know the king he is and the freedom he brings us in our life. I'm so excited to be in worship today, and I hope you are too. I hope you welcomed each other as you've come in. I hope you take an opportunity to do that. Um, if you are our guest, we have connect cards in the back of the chairs in front of you. You can complete that. Um, if, you're our, if you're one of our guests, we want to know you. We want to know all about your family, things we can do. If you want to share a prayer request with us, that's a great way to do that. Also, also, you can scan the QR code that is in the inside of your bulletin that you should have got when you came in. And it takes you to our website. You can fill out the same information there um, as well. If you are a first-time guest, we have a gift for you. Brother Jay will be in the lobby right out these doors. And he has... A gift for you there. You can just give him your card, and, and there's a little gift. Just more information about our church, and we just want to know how we can minister to you and uh, connect you with our family and with our God. So today's a big day, right? I think it's a big day. It's a big day because we have 10,000 eggs that we're going to hide, scatter, on the ball fields at Sports Rec this afternoon. So I hope you're excited to be here, but I hope you're excited about joining us out there. So we'll begin at 4 o'clock. We'll have registration. Um, I need everyone to get a name tag. It's easier to talk to people when we see their name. So everybody, please make sure you get a name tag when you arrive. This is what I need before 4 o'clock, all right? If you have a truck and an able body or just an able body, you can come. At 2.45, we need to have the ice chest getting filled for our snow cones. To haul out there and we also have everything staged in the fellowship hall ready to drive out there so we'll need trucks to help deliver that out there unload it and get it all set up we'll have popcorn and snow cones um, this year we also have an easter story walk and it is a storybook account of the biblical a storybook story of the biblical account of easter morning and so they'll be able to every one of us and our guests in our community will be able to walk through the morning of easter so i hope you'll um, be there. I hope you've got your smile on and you're ready just to connect with somebody in our community and say, hey, we love you because God loves us and he loves you. So that's what I needed to tell you. 2.45, 3 o'clock, we'll load at the Fellowship Hall. We hope to be out there no later than 3.15 to start setting up, popping popcorn, getting snow cones ready, um, setting up for registration, and then event kicks off at 4 o'clock. Sports rec. All right. Y'all got it? All right. Thank you so much for your help. Brother David, will you come and lead us in prayer? We have another very special event happening this week. Denise and Terry Parks are going to be traveling this week to Gdansk, Poland. That is on the northern 
uh, edge of Poland where um, the Baltic Sea is. They are headed there, leaving tomorrow, headed there to work in Ukrainian refugee uh, situations. There's a church there in Gdansk, a Baptist church. Uh, many great organizations all over the world are, are um, converging on that part of, of the world, Poland and other bordering uh, countries there, to, ha- to help take care of these millions and millions of refugees pouring out of U- tr- Ukraine trying to get away from uh, physical harm and danger that many of them have seen and experienced. And um, many great organizations are there trying to help in any way they can. Southern Baptists, believe it or not, are there in, in full force. Terry and Denise will be going over there to work with a Southern Baptist organization, the Send Relief Network. Um, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for them like we're going with them because we are. They're a part of our body, a part of the body of Christ here known as Swartz First Baptist Church. They're going in our name. So we want to pray for them. We want to pray that not only will they get there and be used greatly by God to to help meet physical needs as well as spiritual needs, but also to come back and let us know how we can be more involved than than just praying and sending. I want us all to be thinking about, Lord, do you want us to go there next? They're going to come back. They're going to have all the the, uh, logistics taken care of. They don't really have it all taken care of now, but they will coming back. They'll know exactly what all needs to happen. And there are many people in this room right now that need to be on the next trip. I say that without any, any uh, reservation whatsoever. Many people in this room, you need to be praying, God, do you want me to go next? This need will be around for a very long time. So let's pray for them, excited for them, but let's also be praying for all of our friends, all the people uh, over in that part of the world who, who so much need the help that they're bringing. Let's pray. Lord God, you are so good. You are our God, Lord. You are great. And Lord, what a great opportunity we have right here with Terry and Denise. Lord, I pray you put your arms around them. You fill them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. You provide for them, Lord, every step along the way, getting to Poland and getting back. And Lord, supernaturally fill them with power, strength, and wisdom to be able to help these people who are in the worst possible shape. Lord, to be without their homes, to be missing so many of their own families, to be traumatized from, from uh, the bombing and the, the, the uh, war that has been happening there in their homeland. God, in your name, in the name of Jesus, take these two and use them, Lord, to share your love, to share your hope, to share your healing, God. We just praise you for the opportunity they have. And Lord, we look forward to when we can go with them the next time. Be with us all, Lord. Put your vision in our hearts today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Savior say my strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all cause Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain, he washed in white as snow. Lord, now. 
how indeed I find my power and mine alone and change the leper's spots and melt the heart of Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed in white as died my soul to save my limbs shall still read me lift our voices Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed in white as snow I sin Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Let's lift up our praise. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Sing, Jesus paid it all one more time. Because Jesus paid it all, all to him. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the bridge was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you had me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt i owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had hoped Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life Brought me from the darkness into glory. 
Let everything we do today be all for your glory. Lift up your name. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our kids can go out this door right here and everyone else draw your attention to the screens in just a moment. We have a video we would like you to see. Back in 2018, we had Kaylee, Ainsley, Gabe, and Jade, and Jimmy wanted another little boy, so we tried. We had Caleb, and then God said, ha, here's two more girls. So within a three-year span, we had Caleb in 2018, Huntley in 2019, and Elena in 2020. Each of them were born pretty premature. Um, they all spent a good amount of time in the NICU. Uh, and then, you know, we had to kind of bubble them at home after they were born. And Elena was born right in 2020, and so we had to double bubble her uh, to keep her safe. 
And so that could have kept us from getting back and involved like God wanted us to be. Me and my husband started having issues. We've been married for a few years. We have seven kids, things come in between, and we drifted apart. Uh, things got hard. I decided to let Gabe and Jade go on and come to Vacation Bible School here, help them do something, and that was really kind of our trigger. That's when we got back involved and I had this pull on my heart, you know, you've got to start bringing them. That you can't stay hidden and afraid and just you you got to bring them they got to be in church and so that's that's what prompted it that's what got us in and so we started coming every now and then on sundays and then wednesday night started and i started going to the women's group on wednesday nights and then a few weeks later that's when jimmy went on his retreat and that's that's was really his push he he went on the retreat and he came back he was god did wonders on that 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 weekend and ever since then we've just we've been here we've been a part of sports first baptist and we love it i got involved with the children's ministry and now i'm very involved with the children's ministry which is great because i bring half of it with me every week to church my two oldest girls made the decision to accept christ into their hearts and uh, and around the same time, my husband made the decision to rededicate his life to Christ, and it just worked out perfect. They were all three able to be baptized together uh, a few weeks ago, and that was one of the most special times. And for me as a, as a wife, but as a mother, to be able to see my babies be baptized and take that step of faith, um, it was really special, especially for them to do it with their dad. You know, life's not perfect. We still have our moments. Me and my girls still have our moments. But it's it's a comfort and a joy in my heart to know that at the end of the day, they know in their hearts that they are going to heaven and that they know in their hearts that Jesus is always there with them and for them and that they can turn to Him for anything. And it's it's really nice to know that with the steps that we have taken in the past year or so that it has impacted the lives of our children and my whole family as a whole so miraculously. My name is Ashley and my family's lives are forever changed because he lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ashley, for telling us that story. Um, you may have noticed these plants that are sitting on the side of the platform. Those represent the six people who have been baptized so far this year through the ministry of our church. Um, Jimmy, of course, Ashley's husband Jimmy and two of, two of their children are, are among those. Next Sunday, following both morning services, we're actually going to take these out the front door and plant them out there symbolically and I hope over the next for the next year we end up filling up this whole campus with these rose bushes that symbolize those who have given their lives to Christ we just want to fill up this campus and this is nothing more than just a symbolic way of remembering what God has done in them um, and it also will help beautify our campus. So we're, we're excited about that. I didn't, um, didn't know ex exactly that Ashley would be telling her story this morning, but it's perfectly appropriate that she did, and we will be following up that next Sunday. So you'll want to be sure to, to be back for that. We are this morning in 1 Corinthians Chapter 11. I would like for you to stand with me as we read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 17. This is the only place in the New Testament that the word Lord's Supper appears. What we call the Lord's Supper. It's called other things throughout Scripture. 
But this is the only place where that word is, uh, appears in Scripture, um, the Lord's Supper. But um, that's just trivia in case you happen to show up at a, at a game somewhere later that you need that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. But in the following instructions concerning the Lord's Supper, I cannot praise you. For it sounds as if more harm than good is done when you meet together. First, I hear that there are divisions among you when you meet as a church. And to some extent, I believe it. But, of course, there must be divisions among you so that those who have God's approval will be recognized. When you meet together, you're not really interested in the Lord's Supper. For some of you hurry to eat your own meal without sharing with others. As a result, some go hungry while others get drunk. What? Don't you have your own homes for eating and drinking? Or do you really want to disgrace God's church and shame the poor? What am I supposed to say? Do you want me to praise you? Well, I certainly will not praise you for this. Let's pray. Lord God, what a powerful passage of Scripture we're opening today. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, reveal to us what our hearts and minds are up to this morning. Help us, Lord, to see where we stand with you and to be uh, committed to you to the point of changing wherever we are and making ourselves in a way that, that is approved by you. Lord, that's what we look for this morning. We want your approval, Lord, in the way we express our, our gratitude and our devotion for the sacrifice you have paid for us. Lord, all of this depends on you, and we trust, God, you are here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. Now, we used our palm branches early on uh, in the service, and, and very, bit, very uh, appropriate, this being Palm Sunday, that's where that comes from, is roughly 2,000 years ago, a little bit more, um, as Jesus rode into, no, not even a little bit more, a little less. As Jesus rode into, into town, um, he's on the back of a donkey. People are pulling out branches, even taking particles of clothing and waving them, laying them down in front of him. They're so excited that Jesus has arrived. They think he's coming to establish an earthly kingdom. But just five days later, only five days later, they're crucifying him. How fickle they were. Not us. How fickle people can be to forget or to, to change their, their focus so quickly. This passage of Scripture ties directly to um, the, the observance of the Lord's Supper to the health of the body of Christ. You know, we will observe the Lord's Supper today to commemorate, to remember that Jesus Christ, His body was given for us, His blood was shed for us, but today, we are the body of Christ. And how we function as the body of Christ has absolutely, uh, it absolutely corresponds to how we observe the Lord's Supper. How we are in a right frame of mind in the Lord's Supper. It's so easy for us to get off track. It's so easy to, to forget why we're here any given Sunday. I think back of, of the disciples when, um, when Jesus first introduced the Lord's Supper. This, he gave, gave us this concept. No sooner had He finished teaching them about the Lord's Supper, 
Some of the disciples started arguing with each other over who was going to be the best, the, the greatest in the kingdom. Totally, for, totally missing the point that Jesus was making. They're jockeying for position. Who's going to sit at his right? Who's going to sit at his left? Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? These are guys that had, had walked and lived with Jesus for the better part of three years. And then even later, not, not long after that incident, and all of this comes out of the book of Luke, not long after that incident, Jesus takes them out into a prayer garden. He t- takes them out to, to spend time praying. Jesus knows what's about to happen. He's about to be arrested. He's about to be crucified. He is agonizing over what he knows is coming. He takes his disciples out there with him and, and he breaks them up. He, he has them to, to sit and pray. He's telling them, you need to pray that you don't fall into temptation. You need to pray that you are not overwhelmed and overcome by what, what's about to happen. But what happens? He, Jesus goes off to pray and he is in agony. He keeps coming back on three separate occasions. He comes back to find the disciples are asleep. They couldn't even stay awake for an hour and keep focused on what Jesus had told them. That's what brings me to this passage of Scripture today. I don't want us to be guilty of just taking for granted the sacrifice, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. I want us to to put our hearts and our minds fully engaged into what we're here for today. Twenty-five years later, after the resurrection, twenty-five years later, we come to this passage of Scripture. We come to when this letter was written, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. Just twenty-five years later, we see that that, um, the church at Corinth had really gotten off base. Remember what, what it said here in verse 17, in these following instructions about the Lord's Supper, I can't praise you. It sounds like that when you get together as a church, you're doing more harm than good. And that applies to any of us today. If you come in here on any given Sunday for any other reason than to glorify and lift up the name of Jesus and to edify and build up one another in the love of Christ, if you come here for any other reason, you're doing more harm than good. Then in verse 18, he said, First, I hear there are divisions among you when you meet as a church. And to some extent, I believe it. Now, in this particular case, he's actually talking about, um, you know, when they did the Lord's Supper, um, it, was, it was around a fellowship meal. It was a, it was a much bigger uh, issue, and those who had more were abusing or neglecting those who had less. Let's read about more uh, more of that in here in just a minute. I hear there are divisions among you. He said, but but of course there's going to be divisions among you so that those who are doing God's will, God's way, it'll be obvious. They are the ones who have God's approval. Those who are stirring up division of any sort, in the body of Christ, you are disapproved by God. Verse 20, he said, when you, you meet together, you're not really interested in the Lord's Supper. It's almost like he says, you're not really interested. This isn't really about the Lord's Supper, is it? You're not really interested, are you? And here's where we, where we know that they, around a fellowship meal... Um, it was, a, it was a BYOB situation. Bring your own basket of food, but also bring your own bottle. I'm going to tell you how that, that's in here too. I, I wouldn't bring up something that's not here. For some of you are in a hurry to heat your own meal without sharing for others. Those who had the capacity to bring a better basket of food... You bring it, you're bringing it to church, and then you're just sitting down and scarfing all of this good food down to yourself for yourself instead of sharing 
with others around you. As a result, some are going hungry while others are getting drunk. You don't get drunk on grape juice. They were, those who had were hoarding for themselves and overindulging for themselves at what was supposed to be a fellowship meal that was shared among the body of Christ. So those who had less were going without. In verse 22, he says, What? Don't you have your own homes for eating and drinking, eating and drinking as much as you want? Why would you come to church and disgrace God's church and shame the poor? What am I supposed to say? Do you want me to praise you? Oh, I'm not going to praise you for this. Then we'll come back to, to the actual Lord's Supper that's in that scripture here a little bit later. But let's drop down to verse 26. He says, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until He comes. That's why we do the Lord's Supper. We are announcing His death. We are letting people know. We're reminding ourselves. Folks, this week, remind yourself. If you really want next Sunday to be a great celebration for you, remind yourself this week what God has done for you. On the back side of your worship guide, I've listed some, some things there that you can use Monday through Saturday of this coming week just to remind yourself what God has done for you, what Jesus has done for you, what He went through, the sacrifice that He's paid. You need to be reminded. We take it for granted. Any way that you can, Announcing the Lord's death until He comes again. He's coming again. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm looking forward to that day that I'm with Him. But until I am with Him, i got a job to do here on this earth, and that's announcing His death until He comes. Then verse 28. He wants us to take the, the, the Lord's Supper seriously. He wants us to have our heart and soul into what we're doing. And only you can answer that. I can't answer that for you. And in verse 28, he says, Examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Examine yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. What am I here for? I, I need to be honest with you. I can remember... As a child, growing up in church, only because there were some good church people who came and got me every, every Sunday, by the way. Let me remind you of that. But growing up in church, when I would walk into the church building and I saw this great display up front and, and, and you know, this mound of trays and, and covered over with a, with a cloth, my first reaction was, Ugh, we got to sit through this again. We've got, to, we've got to take the time to this ceremony, this folding of the drape to, to you know, everybody passing these things out. And uh, I can't believe we've got to do this again. That's what many of us think about even today. As adults, we still think, ah, uh, that, that means we're going to go long today, isn't it? Examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread, listen to this, and drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment on yourself. That's strong. That is a strong word. Verse 30. That is why, listen to this, many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. God takes seriously when we take the Lord's Supper for granted, or we disgrace the Lord's Supper in the way we handle that. And let me remind you, when we're examining ourselves, we need to ask ourselves, are we the cause of, are we allowing any division in the body of Christ? 
I don't care how small it is. If there is any division within us, in our heart, in our mind, if there any division for any other person in the body of Christ, whether they're in this church or any church, we're disgracing the Lord's Supper. We need to examine ourselves. That's why many of you, it says verse 30, some of you are weak. Why? Because the judgment of God is on you. That's why. Some of you are sick. Why? Because the judgment of God is on you. That's why. You're disgracing the body of Christ. And some have even died. This is tough stuff, y'all. I didn't make it up. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So then he tells us in verse 33, My dear brothers and sisters, when you gather for the Lord's Supper, wait for each other. Take consideration of one another. Make sure there's no divisions among you in any way. Wait for each other. That's one of the reasons why we take our time. We pass this all out. And it's not until we've all been served that we will take the bread. It's not until we've all been served that we'll take the cup. Why? Because we do this together. This is the body of Christ. We're commemorating the actual body of Christ that was given for us, His blood that was shed for us. We're commemorating that, but it's all about being the body of Christ now and handling the body of Christ the way God would have us. So I want us to do that right now. I want us to examine ourselves. We're going to go into a time of invitation here. And whether you sit at your seat or whether you come up here to the altar, whatever you would like to do, examine yourself. Ask God, Lord, is there anything in me that's not right with you? Is there anything in me that's not right with any other living brother or sister in Christ, whether they're in this building or whether they are scattered among any other church uh, body that, that's, um, that exists, period. Lord, show me. And I'm going to repent of that. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to ask God to heal that. And I'm going to ask God to show me how to be approved in His eyes to fully participate with, with sincerity and with all honesty as a part of the body of Christ, to participate in the Lord's Supper with all sincerity and with all honesty. Would you stand with me? Let's take this time to examine ourselves. There's 
There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. Where all the like a flood comes flowing It says, when you come together for the Lord's Supper, wait for each other and do it together. Do it unified. Earlier in our passage of Scripture, verse 23 For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord Himself. On the night when He was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Dear Lord, just thank you for this uh, time, the special time of worship, Lord, to uh, just celebrate what you have done for each and every one of us, Lord. Just uh, pray, pray your blessings upon this bread, Lord, that stands for your your body, Lord, which was broken and nailed to the cross, Lord, to, uh, to pay the price for our sins, Lord, uh, a price that we cannot, that we could not pay, Lord, but you did. And Lord, just uh, praise you for the fact that three days later, Lord, you uh, rose from that grave and paved the path for us to live in eternity with you in heaven, Lord. Just thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.
He said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and gave thanks. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this day. Father, for the remembrance of uh, your sacrifice for us. Father, the, the body that was broken, the blood that was shed. Father, I just pray, uh, thanking you for that. Father, through your sacrifice, you've redeemed the world. Father, I just pray that, uh, that we do remember that today. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
said this cup is the new covenant between God and His people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. This do in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Take and drink. I want to say what a privilege it is to serve with you here in the body of Christ. Because what He has done for us and because of the sacrifice He's made for us, we have the privilege of together glorifying Him, letting everyone know who He is and the love that God has for all of us. What a privilege that is. We need to guard that. We need to guard the fellowship of our church because we are a living example and living proof of the body of Christ. He says, For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you will be announcing the Lord's death until He comes. This is a job we will never be done with. We'll never finish do, doing this until Jesus comes back to take us all away, to take us all to be with Him. Neil's going to close us out in just a moment with a, with a song. A, a few things I want to remind you of as we get ready to leave here today. First of all, anyone and everyone that would like to come and be a part of, of this opportunity we've got this afternoon 2.45, 3 o'clock, we'll be loading up here. And then at, um, at the rec center, we'll be at, at 4 o'clock and having that event. That's a, just a great time to get to know people, just to let folks know that there is a body of people at Swartz First Baptist Church that just cares about their community. And to be able to, to, to um, make some connections with people that we may not have another opportunity to do that. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. The more you prepare yourself this week, the more you remember this week, the more special that celebration will be next Sunday. And I want to remind you that the times have changed. It won't change for you. 1045 will still be next week. But there's another service. The early service is going to be at 9 o'clock instead of 815. So um, help us get that word out. Just for Easter Sunday, those, those times will, will be different. All right. Neil, take us out of here. All right, let's stand together. We're going to sing the song we, did, we started off with. So get those palm branches back out. We're going to end with uh, singing Hosanna one more time. Praise is rising, and eyes are turning to you. We turn to you, and hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us And worthy of all our praises Hosanna And Hosanna Hosanna Come have your way Come have your way amongst us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Man, let's give the Lord one more hand. We'll see you all this afternoon out at the ballpark. And next Sunday, remember, be here uh, at those times. We love you. See you later.